So part two of a compilation of poetry anthology collections. So the first one is the Oxford Anthology of African American Poetry, edited by Arnold Rampersand, Associate Editor Hilary Helbert. Herbert. So you get uh, again like with any this isn't one specific poet this is a variety of african-american poets and it is divided into different sections you get the title of the poem there and what poet wrote it here and then so you get a eight 14, 15 different different sections and you do get a variety I want to say more than a dozen poets in this book so in the intro it does say the this collection was not to be a historical survey of First by black Americans, much less a scholarly, scholarly edition replete with footnotes, but rather one designed to paint a portrait of African American life and culture achieved through the medium of poetry written by African Americans themselves. So, you get quite a bit of an introduction to the anthology. So, and then after that, you get into the poems themselves. Now, some are a decent size and pretty much similar to what we kind of see now, rather than like say a, um, a poem like two, three centuries ago. So some are like one page and there are a few like Uh, like tabbed <laughs> a lot so and then you do get some that are a few pages long so and some are like about four pages long and you do get poems that are of their experiences in t within the poem so and when it's a new section it it isn't part four like this is part four here it is in part four and then like the next page end of part three part four and then they don't like really, they didn't really waste space in this book so and you are getting a whole bunch of poems like it's a really thick book and you are getting like really impactful poems so yeah so like you do get the an african-american experience view through poetry so if you do want to have a look at something like this, you do have this anthology by Oxford. And okay, so you get poems by writers as different as Paul Lawrence Dunbar and W.E.B. Dubois, County Cullen and Langston Hughes, Gwendolyn Brooks and Amari Baccarat, Rita Dove and Harriet Mulan, among others. So you get do get different styles of writing and a huge you get a huge selection of poems. So we you got this book to have a look at. Next book is kind of a different turnaround. 
It's a, Paul, a Penguin classic, uh, metaphysical poetry from Elizabethan age to the restora restoration and beyond. Meso metaphysical poetry reacted to a time of startling progress, scientific discovery, unrivaled exploration, and deep re religious uncertain uncertainty. So you are getting poems by like Donne, Herbert, Marvell, and Van Bogon, among others. And so it is edited along with an interject introduction and notes by Colin, Colin Burrow in here. And so like with a lot of the anthologies, like pretty much like every single one that I've shown, you get in the contents the name of the poet and then what poems are in there that they decided to put into the book. So in the intro, he does talk about some of the poets and so under the section of A Very Short History of Metaph Meta Metaphysical Poetry, Don, uh, almost all the poems in this volume are influenced by or respond to the work of John Don, with whom metaphysical poetry effectively, uh, effectively begins. His older friend, Henry Wharton, gets first position in this volume solely by vir virtue of his birth date. As far as we know, Don's earliest works were erotic elegies modeled on Ovid and satires broadly influenced by Roman poet Horace. So you get information, history, backstory of different the different poets in here. And in this section of and in this anthology, you do get like a notes bibliography section kind of within the intro. But um, in the intro, he has, in preparing this collection, I had two aims. One was to present the best and most enjoyable metaphysical poetry in accessible texts. The second was to give readers some material which this, which is representatively good rather than excellent in order to show what was going on around and between the poems, which hit you between the eyes and with their curious excellence. Minor poems minor poets from the 17th century almost all could write and are now read and reprinted less often than they deserve. So, <clears throat> and you also get some further reading within the introduction, which you normally see notes and further readings more at the back. And then, so you do get a, the classic kind of poetry setup that one would be used to within the time periods that he has put into these books and the time period he has focused on. So you do get like good page kind of like poems and with like a lot with a few of the anthologies that I have shown it's just continuous it's not here's one work then here's the next it's one right after another as soon as one ends another one starts and then you do get like the numbers of like this is line 80 right here so if you're looking at oh let's look at it line 82 you got 80 81 82 so if you've ever read like Shakespeare that kind of has the same thing and so you do get a wide selection of different poems. A lot, some of them are a few pages long. Like this one is about three pages, three and a half pages. So you do get a few that are short. Some are broken up into different sections. So you are getting more page to three, four pages long. So if you like the longer poems, the more story-like poems, this collection 
would be one for you. And then at the end you got like notes and the index is index of titles. And then index of first lines. So a few of the books that I have seen, some of them, some of the index are like that. You get index of titles and then index of first lines. But if you do like that time period between the Elizabethan to Restoration period, th this would give some insight of what people were producing at that time. Kind of will give you a fuller aspect of that time period. So that kind of leads into, <laughs> I don't know how this le that leads to, to, to this next one, but I've put it into the middle of this. You got poetry of sex. So this is definitely a adult read. So you do have that. And so you do get a variety of different poets uh, uh, with the day with a handful of topics surrounding this topic. So around sex, so you get a variety of selections. Some are short, some are, you are looking at two, page, two plus pages. So some are kind of like almost really story-like, some are like short, quick to the point kind of thing. So you do have that within this. So you, if you do like that topic of, well, sex, and or want to have a different anthology kind of thing, you do, this is up there. So, and I'm not gonna go much into that one. And I'm again, not gonna go much into this one. 16th Century Poetry, an annotated anthology edited by Gordon Brendan. Oh, um, this one edited by Sophie Hanna. So, you are getting long type of poems and you are getting, uh, like the title says, annotated. So, mm, like the annotation is line whatever and it'll give like, a definition or more up-to-date term of a word or a reference to something so like in this one 34 3 okay so the video is likely going to be really weird now I had to change cameras because of memory and battery and I'm not too sure where it, it cut off when talking about 16th century poetry the annotated anthology by edited by Gordon Brandon and I don't know if it recorded um, you saying that the editor of this one was Sophie Hanna but you do get with this one very very long of the poems in here and the annotations so it'll have like section 46.2 so 46 line 2 at once together so and for hand caught so it, like definitions up to date terminology throughout and you do get a selection of poets through that time and again very long story like so when talking about the poet you when you get to that poet it does have a little bit of information about that about the poet and then goes into the selections of okay so wrong <laughs> poet whole chunk of information I was looking at another poem and then it gets into the poetry so if you like the 16th century so 1500s you are getting a whack load of like content here Again, if it's annotated, it would likely you might lose a few pages if it wasn't, but you're getting 
you're getting an introduction to the poet, you are getting a selection of poems. So if you are the type of person that likes this type of writing or that time period, this would be a good selection to add into your library. And it's worth not like saving like random pieces of paper here or there. You got an entire book if you want to go get it because you are looking at, I don't even know how much, but you, you'd be likely chucking out 40, 50 bucks for that. And ending with something a little different, you got poetry as a spiritual practice, reading, writing, and using poetry in your daily rituals, aspirations, and intentions. Robert McDonald, McDowell. And so it does have a selection of poems th throughout, but with this one, you get exercises. So he'll write the poem and have an exercise of something relating to that poem. So it's more of an interactive type of poetry book, if you want, wanted to call it that. And so it's not quick kind of go through. And so it's having you create something rather than like reading a spiritual po poem you are reading you are reading some but he is having you do some work as well to connect with that to connect with your spiritual side so you are getting getting that so some might connect with what he's doing here some might not so it all depends but yeah Poetry as Spiritual Practice by Robert McDowell, and that ends part two of po poetry anthologies. <laughs> uh, there, who knows, I might have a part three, but yeah. Happy readings.